Today we're going to find out how good Snorlax would be in Generation 1 if it just added the ghost typing. This run came about as I was trying to find ways to beat Brock on minimum battles with a Snorlax. Funny enough, in spite of the fact that it's one of the strongest Gen 1 Pokemon, it can't actually beat this game on minimum battles on zero DVs. But the fact that Snorlax can't beat Brock on minimum battles is actually pretty terrible because for the rest of the run, I think this Pokemon is pretty darn good. And that got me experimenting with all kinds of ideas of how we could legitimately beat this fight. Everything from giving TMs that could be bought in Goldenrod City like Ice Punch, or using a TM that nobody would really use in a normal run like Counter. But I finally decided to test this out with Lick, since Lick is a Gen 2 egg move, and it makes too much sense. You can get Paralysis, it's neutrally effective against both of the rock types on Brock's team, and if you can paralyze them, you might just be able to get through this fight eventually. Sure enough, it works. But then that got me thinking, what if Snorlax was a ghost normal type Pokemon? That would be incredibly broken. And since we're close to Halloween, I've decided to give this run a shot and see just how much better Snorlax would be if it added this extra typing. Why would you want a ghost normal type Pokemon though? Well, in fact, this Pokemon has no type weaknesses. It's immune to both fighting and normal, and it's also immune to ghost. Not that there are really any ghost moves in Gen 1, but you know, it's kind of nice. On top of that, we have a type resistance against both the bug type and the poison type. So we end up in a situation where we have two type resistances and no type weaknesses, and three types are just completely ineffective. This Pokemon could be the most broken thing that's ever been in Gen 1. But how strong would it be? Would it be better than Mewtwo? Would it go to the top of the tier list? I had to test it out and find out. So in this run, I'm doing one run with a normal Snorlax and one run with a ghost Snorlax. We're gonna compare the results and see which one turns out to be better, both in terms of score on my tier list and in terms of total time. So let's get into the runs and find out. So here we are going to start a brand new game and of course, this is the Legend of Ghost Lax. So we're starting the game with Lick in our bottom move slot. We will have Amnesia and Rest right from the beginning of the game. Not that they really do anything right at the start. But uh, there we go. Professor Oak, he's going to catch a Ghost Snorlax. He's going to be like, what the hell is this? What the hell is this? But uh, Ghost Lax, he's a legend, a true legend. Here, it doesn't matter what we name him because his name is Ghost Lax. So here, just checking out Ghost Lax at the beginning of the game. He's a zero DB Snorlax, of course. We've got 16 in attack, 11 defense, 9 speed, and 13 special. This screen will not show the fact that we have the ghost typing. Do not worry, the ghost typing is there. We're starting with Headbutt, Amnesia, Rest, and Lick. Lick will be a same type move. And uh, we're in the slow level up group. That's probably our only disadvantage here, but let's just see how this goes. Rival one fight. I'm just going headbutt. Oh, get headbutt to death and see we're ghost. So tackle can't affect ghosts, boys. That's where we get the huge advantage in this one. So the rival one fight is basically a guaranteed win with either of these Snorlaxes because of the fact that we're using a really strong same type attacking move in headbutt. The only real difference is that Ghostlax actually can't be hit by the Eevee, whereas a normal Snorlax is just going to be impossible to ever KO from that Eevee because we're always going to do way too much damage. And Viridian Forest is more of the same. Both of these Snorlaxes completely beat up on this bug catcher because even though Normalax can be hit by it, it doesn't matter. You're never going to lose, even at level 5. We only get to level 6 going into Brock though, and this might be where we start to see a difference. Borderline impossible, you know, like practically impossible. We could use Game Hook to simply permanently freeze his Pokemon. The beauty of this is twofold. Number one, it lets us clearly demonstrate just how impossible this fight is. 
We're going to come in here with our Snorlax. We're going to see the Geodude is frozen. He's going to use full heals. It doesn't matter. He can't do anything. Now we're going to just headbutt repeatedly. Oh, I still have Surf on my moveset. Rip. Sorry, we're going to get rid of Surf. Not a legit move. Right, so here yet again. Oh, we get a Gen 1 miss with headbutt. Rip. <laughs> oh, man. Terrible. Get a crit there, though, so that was nice. Okay, so we're just whittling this one down. Cool. We win. There, we're out of headbutts. So now we have to use all the amnesias. All of them. You know, this is minimum battles, guys. So I didn't say we could fight wild Pokemon to use up PP anyway, but even if we could, so you use up all the amnesias, you still have to struggle this Pokemon down. So yeah, here we're just using all those up and now let's use up the whirlwinds that we put in the last slot so that we can actually struggle this time. So here we go. Okay, so now we get a struggle and we can see we're doing exactly one damage per hit, which is why we need all the HP here. So this just really goes to show the impossibility of this battle, you know? Like we we had one Gen 1 miss with Headbutt, but in general we're getting to the Onyx with one or two Headbutts remaining. And then we're, you know, stuck in this situation of you have to struggle it down, you know? And if it even managed to hit us like more than one time with any move, we're dead. So yeah, we get through there, but yeah. <laughs> so now that we've gotten through Brock completely illegitimately, let's just see how the rest of the run goes. So here, Brock. Oh my God, this legend. He's he thinks that the rock Pokemon are good enough for our Snorlax, and in a normal run, he would be right against the Zero DV Snorlax. But uh, we've got a surprise for him get licked <laughs> oh yes oh yes we're just gonna lick rocks all day every day this is gonna be slower than a lot of other pokemon because we have to lick him but you know now against onyx we are going to lick it okay there it gets paralyzed now i'm just gonna spam amnesia while he's fully paralyzed nice and now we can headbutt and possibly get him to, uh, whatchamacall, flinch. Here we're just spamming Amnesia while he's using Bide, because we can. I think the damage output between Headbutt and uh, Lick is pretty close. What the heck, I mean, we're, we've got tons of, tons of HP, so there's nothing to really worry about here. And we win. There we go. So about four minutes, 420 in fact, to beat Brock. That's nice. 420 and just a little bit of change, guys. So it's important to remember that these runs are being done on zero DVs. These are the worst possible Snorlaxes. If you had max DVs or max IVs, for those of you coming from later gens, a normal Snorlax can actually beat Brock on minimum battles, but it still requires quite a bit of luck. You have to be able to get through the Geodude with enough health, and you still end up using Struggle, but on the max IV situation, you actually end up with enough HP and defense to take more hits, and you outspeed the Geodude from the beginning of the fight, which is huge, because then Headbutt can actually flinch it. But here, we're doing this on zero DVs, and Ghostlax gets through, while Normlax does not. But Ghostlax keeps its advantage in this next section. It's an absolute nightmare for all of these trainers because they're all using normal or poison type moves. We are completely immune to normal moves and we resist poison, meaning that we beat everything in this section with basically no difficulty. But it's not like Normlax is struggling too much here either. Headbutt is super strong and it has tons of HP so, as long as you just keep it healed up, it should win every single fight without too much difficulty. That is, until we get to Jesse and James. 
but this is okay. This is fine. Everything's fine. Not, nothing to worry about here. Okay, there we get a leer, so we get a rest up. Second leer. Oh, we immediately get poisoned again. Okay, so there we knock that one out. We get the bite, but we one shot there. Oh man, we were just on too low health there when we got to the uh, coughing. So here, let's try again from that range. Okay, here. Okay, he misses wrap there. Now he hits wrap, but that's fine because we're we're resting. Here we just want to land the hit so that we can KO that one. Scratch is fine. Okay, now let's rest. Yeah, here with no leers, we're surviving just fine. Smog's not doing that much. And now we can headbutt, headbutt, and we get poisoned, but we headbutt. There we go. Not too scared of them. So here we'll go amnesia right now so that we get all the boosts. Okay, we're poisoned again, but this shouldn't really matter. Here, we'll just rest off damage and poison real quick. Here, headbutt. Here, growl reduced our damage. Here, we'll just go water gun to finish that one off. There we go. Cool. So easy game, easy, easy game. So while Normlax had multiple resets on JSC and James, Ghostlax just beats him on the first attempt. Yes, you can say one went in poison, the other didn't. Didn't really matter. Both of them are using rest to heal up damage to get rid of status. They both got poisoned in the fight. The big difference was that Meowth's bite can't hit Ghostlax, so it just completely crushes them. But next up, we have another big challenge, rival number two. We're gonna check out how Normlax does, then Ghostlax. This one might not be that big of a difference given that we've picked up Water Gun in Mount Moon, but let's find out. Okay, so here, first things first, I'm going Amnesia in this fight. You know, we're not taking that much damage from this Spearow anyway. So we can just knock it out. Now Sandshrew, we want to water gun it. Good. Hyper Fang missed, so we just one shot there. Eevee tail whips and tail whips, and we win. Level 15, no problem. Here, and let's start the fight with rival number two, where we're just going to set up a bunch of amnesias first. Here, I will headbutt this one because I can. Sandshrew comes out. Time for some water gun action. Okay. And now we've effectively won because nothing can hit us from here on out. So, uh, yeah, Ghost Lax kind of being a legend here. So even with all the growls, no problem. We get through that. And we can progress north. So both Snorlax easily beat rival number two pretty easy to see why. They've got good movesets and they both came in with 69 HP so they were bound to win that fight. We all know that 69 is pretty nice. But that fight may give you the false impression that these two runs are basically the same at this point. I mean, sure, we're gonna still be able to be hit with Normlax and not with Ghostlax, but we're so powerful we should just be basically battering our way through all of these Pokemon, right? Well, not so fast. This is the first section of the game on Nugget Bridge where we actually have to fight some fighting type Pokemon. And that is a major advantage for Ghostlax. In spite of the fact that it is a normal type Pokemon, the ghost typing makes it immune to fighting type moves. So while Ghostlax is clowning even higher leveled Menkeys in this section of the game, Normlax has to save between every single trainer on this Nugget Bridge because even the lasses have Nidorans that are using double kick here that could easily knock it out if we just didn't heal or if we got a bad range or got a critical hit. So yeah, this is actually a scarier section for a normal Snorlax 
given its relatively low level. But there is one fight in this section of the game where Normlax might actually be better than Ghostlax. The Misty Fight. So here against Misty, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the Amnesias first, knowing that she can also tackle us. She doesn't have to water gun. But here we'll just, you know, headbutt that one down. Yeah, we get a tackle right there, which we really don't care. And then we just knock her out. So easy win. All right. So here I'm going to Amnesia first for defensive purposes. And now we've got 69 HP, oh no, 66 HP, rip. It's the end. Okay, no crit, please. There we go, easy win. So Misty goes down, we've added one TM so far, but we're otherwise doing just fine. So in spite of the fact that both Snorlaxes easily beat Misty, I actually spotted something in that battle that made me a little bit worried for Ghostlax going forward. Misty is the first opponent in the game that has smart AI. And because of her smart AI, she won't use normal type attacking moves against Ghostlax because she knows that they're not effective. So she only used her stronger water type attacks. Whereas Normlax, being a normal type Pokemon, has no type weaknesses or type advantages there. So she just perfectly randomizes between her four moves. And as we go through the game against more opponents with smart AI, that could actually become a major factor. It could even turn out that the ghost typing is a disadvantage in certain fights. We'll just have to see. For now, Ghostlax easily crushes all of the random trainers on the way down to Vermilion City, and it's time to take on rival number three. We'll skip Body Slam because we shouldn't need it, and we'll skip the Rare Candy because minimum battles. <laughs> so here, Let's go ahead and uh, start by headbutting this Spearow to death. Nice. Now we set up the Amnesias right here on Rattata since it can't hit us with anything anyway. Headbutt. Now a Water Gun for the Sand True is a one hit KO. We get Sand Attacked, but we completely destroy EV, so that was perfectly fine too. So here, rub his tummy, and uh, we can get on off of the boat, you know. We just randomly go around rubbing people's tummies. I mean, it kind of makes sense. When you look at Snorlax, you'd rub his tummy, right? Come on, come on. It's like Totoro over there. So Normlax also doesn't struggle at all on rival number three. And for some of these fights that are very similar between both Pokemon, I'm just gonna skip over the second one. We'll just keep the focus on Ghostlax. But there is a fight coming up where they might be very different. The Lieutenant Surge fight. In Pokemon Yellow, he doesn't have Smart AI, and his Raichu knows Mega Kick and Mega Punch, two normal type moves that might have an impact on which one gets through this fight faster. So here, let's just uh, spam Headbutt first. Mega Punch misses, Thunderbolt doesn't one shot, and we win. <laughs> Oh my god, come on. Lieutenant Surge. Legend. <laughs> oh, that guy's so bad. So bad at the world of Pokemon. So, Surgey time. We are going to simply headbutt, I think. He X speeds and he growls. <laughs> Okay, good job. That first Thunderbolt had me a little nervous, like maybe he was going to beat me. And then he's just like, uh, yeah, that's right. I'm Lieutenant Surge. <laughs> he just goes back to being bad. <laughs> oh, man. So there we go. Bike voucher. Talk here. Let's get the squirt. And uh, we can go ahead and just uh, dig back. Oops. Dig back to Cerulean. So here we go. We've made it to the Rock Tunnel Hiker. Let's just make sure that we get through this. Uh, I'm going to rest because Rock Throw is not that accurate for one. And he can just do that <laughs> and that. Okay. Okay. And how about a water gun? Oh, it's not quite a one hitter. Two hitter. 
But cool, we get rid of Paralysis and we get through the Rock Tunnel Hiker with no problem. Two of his Pokemon self-destructed, but they forgot they can't hit Ghost Snorlax. So through half of the battles, any minimum battles run, it turns out that Ghost Lax is in Celadon City at about 23 minutes, where it's actually taken over 29 minutes for our Normlax to reach the same point. And considering the fact that we froze Brock's Pokemon to allow Normlax to get through that fight without wasting a ton of time, this is actually a pretty big advantage for our Ghost Lax up to this point. And it really shows that the advantage of Ghost Lax lies more in the fact that it doesn't take damage, it doesn't have to go back to the Pokemon Center as often. If it gets in a tough spot, it can even just struggle opponents down because they can't do anything back to it. But we are starting to reach the point in the game where most of our opponents are going to have non-normal type moves that can do damage and the AI to use them. But first, we have to take on Giovanni. So Giovanni time, let's just see here. I'm going to try to go straight for Water Gun. It is a one hitter there. So that means Water Gun, oh, not quite a one hitter on Rhyhorn, but we knock it out. And now we can just headbutt here because Persian can do literally nothing. So no need to do all the setup there. All right, so uh, here we go. We can go right on over to fight against rival four. Let's see how this goes. Okay, so first things first, we are going to set up the Amnesias here. And now we're just going to spam Headbutt and win. I think we just stick with Headbutt for a minute here. Nice. We're definitely Headbutting the Shelter. Okay, we Headbutted to death. Now we can go Water Gun right here. Easy one hitter. And here, Headbutt followed by a water gun. Cool. Now on to Jesse and James, where I think we just headbutt there. We don't really care about anything that this Arbok can do. Like, it can paralyze us, but that's not really the end of the world here. And uh, we'll just rest anyway to get all our HP back. We're far more concerned about the, uh, the wheezing and its sludge. Okay, but we get through, no problem, no problem at all. So, uh, Mr. Fuji. So up to this point in the game, it's pretty clear that our Ghost Lax is completely crushing Kanto. But this is actually a little bit deceiving, because if we look at Normlax, it's crushing this section of the game just as hard. None of these opponents have smart AI, which means we just completely crush them with good strategy. It's only when we come up against opponents that have smart AI or that have significant levels above us that we have any potential to really see any difference between these two Pokemon. And Koga might just be a perfect example of this. So let's get into the fight first with Ghostlax, then with Normlax, and compare how many resets it takes both of these Pokemon to get through this one. So now I kind of want him to use Poison Gas on me, which is why I'm just setting up Amnesia here. I'm just gonna rest again. Here, I'm just spamming Amnesia, hoping that he'll use Poison Gas. Yes, he does. Okay. The reason we want to be poisoned here is because of Koga's AI. He's going to want to, like, put us to sleep and things like that. He'll never use Toxic on us, but he wants to use Sleep on us. <laughs> to beat him. All right, so against Koga, I'm going to lead off with the Amnesia to reduce the damage from Psychic. Here. Now, let's Rock Slide against this one. Okay, that is a one-hitter. Second Venonat. That is also... Oh, not quite a one-hitter. No. Okay, no crits, please. No crits, please. Okay, so now I am going to rest, and we're kind of praying that he just is bad against us. Okay, nope, he goes sleep powder. Oh, we need desperately to wake up, and he's dropping my special. Okay, let's try this again. 
Okay. So we're going Amnesia the whole way here because we need to reduce his damage output. And we get knocked out. Um, 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 um. Like, we're never going to outspeed here is the whole point. We kind of want him to use, like, X attack. So here we do get a rest and heal up. And there he does use an X attack. Now, he should just be randomizing here. So he goes Psychic there. That's fine. Oh, he gets the critical hit Psychic there. Okay. So now we want to rest here. Okay. We've gotten a lot of special drops against us, so we're going to boost our special back up here on this Venonat. Since this one only will attack us, we can recover. We're at plus five special right now. So one more Amnesia. Let's even just headbutt him. Cool. Let's go headbutt there and we one shot. Nice. Here. Oh, we hit ourselves in confusion. No. Okay. Headbutt one shots there. Oh, yes. All the badge boosts were enough. So we were able to get through. So it took a few resets. We have, you know, some, some inconsistency here, sure, but... We're making it. We're, we're doing something, guys. Everything's fine. This is one spot where Ghost Lax was at a disadvantage because it's ghost typing meant that he would never use his physical moves like tackle against it. So here we have a slight advantage in that sense. So now we're going to go rock slide here. Okay, it's not a one hitter. It's a two hit KO here. Here we get confused. Psychic does do good damage. Okay. We have to reset there. Let's uh, try again here. So here I'm going to set up Amnesia first. I think this is the way to go. Here we're going to rest up. Because he's not guaranteed to use something like Toxic or sleep powder on us. Okay, we're so close to the one-hitter there. We dislike the sleep, though. Okay, so this one can't use sleep on us. So we're actually going to rest right here. We're going to rest off Toxic, even. Gets a critical hit Psybeam. That sucked. Okay, we get Toxic again. That means we can't be put to sleep here, though, so that's actually kind of good. Psychic critical hit. Come on. Come on. But we get the psychic there. Okay. Yeah, we... we now he goes for double team. But now he goes psychic. Oh, we survive. <laughs> oh, God. So here, we're going to set up Amnesia again since we're not on full health. Okay, we're headbutting. Just because headbutt's 100% accurate, I think it had a better shot. But then we got knocked out with him just on a sliver of health due to the grit. Oh, the critical hit psychic. That was bad. Now, finally, we're to Venomoth. We're going to rock slide once there. Oh, and we get the critical hit again from Venomoth. Are you kidding me? Oh, we're back to the same luck that we were having with Ghost Lax yesterday. No. Oh, man. Oh, man. This is just a brutal fight. KEX attacks, so we get a rest here. Here, let's finish our amnesia setup. Okay, he toxics us. 
Here we're just gonna rest off Toxic. Here we get Sleep Powdered. Come on, wake up, wake up. Oh, we're so close. Oh, he knocks himself out in confusion. Or uh, with uh, Double Edge, rather. Okay, so now we can sleep. Gets a special drop on us there. Goes Toxic. Okay, we just need one more hit. And there we go. So there, without a critical hit, we are able to beat Koga. Oh, there we go. So Koga's down. We now get a badge boost in speed, among other things. So that fight against Koga was actually a great example of randomness in Pokemon. You see, Normlax should, in theory, be much better against Koga than Ghostlax. The reason's pretty simple. He's going to use moves like Toxic, and he's going to use moves like Tackle or Leech Life against Normlax when he'll never use them against Ghostlax. Now, in most runs, you'd be saying you don't want to be hit by Toxic, but this is a rare exception because we have access to rest. As long as we don't let the Toxic build up too much, we can just rest it off, and it's not the run killer that it normally would be. It's a big reason why I consider rest to be a broken TM, because it takes certain statuses that should be run enders or should require resets in a battle and just makes them a non-factor. But it turned out that Normlax needed more resets in that fight than our Ghostlax. And it was basically just because we got into terrible critical hit luck at the end of the battle. So Ghostlax dodges the bullet. Maybe the bullet just went through it and had no effect, I don't know. But it got through the first major challenge without too much difficulty. But now we have two more big challenges coming up. We're going to have to take on Erica, and we're going to have to take on rival number five. And if neither of them work, we're going to have to try Blaine. We're sticking to minimum battles. We will adjust our moveset as we need to. But this could be a hard section of the game, actually. Let's just see how the Erica fight goes and then jump to the rival five fight. So here we go. Let's uh, start off with the Amnesia, of course. We just want to reduce damage that we take. Now I think the Headbutt is perfectly fine. And against Weeping Bell, we flinch it. Nice. So now we've effectively won. There we go. Erica, joke. Absolute joke. Okay, so here, let's save the game right here. Let's just try to beat our rival as we are. So here, we can only be affected by Poison Sting and Sand Attack, but I am going to use all the Amnesias here. Okay, we get a Sand Attack. Technically, that increases our, our attack, though. Here, we're trying for a Rock Slide here. Nice, we get through. Cool. Thunder Shock. Here I am going to rest here, just because I'm getting on kind of lowish health. Okay, and we knock that one out. Kadabra goes confusion, but we one shot it. Flareon, Ember. Here we just need to actually connect with attacks. Fire spin. Ooh. We're trying to use rest if we can just ever escape fire spin. And he knocks us out with an ember at the end. That was just terrible because of the fire spins. Okay, let's try again. We should have won that first one if not for the the god tier accuracy and the sand attack, of course. Uh, three. Okay, we get three poison stings in a row this time. Okay. Oh, there we get through with no sand attacks. Now we just need to not be clamped forever. Okay. Goes with draw, but that should be fine. Yes, we knock it out with the rock slide. So now Magneton does paralyze me. Still going to headbutt it twice. And now we'll rest off damage and paralysis just to get rid of that status. 
And let's just headbutt him. Kadabra, headbutt, nice. Still have plenty of headbutts here on Flareon. So just wanted to use Ember or miss the fire spin is also fine. And there we go. We finally win that one. No problem. No problem. No problem. So we had a few resets there, but you know, nine, 96.9. That's all sixes and nines, guys. Oh, that's that's nice. That's a nice score down there. Look at that. See, this is perfect. This all just works clearly here. So we've got a bunch of body slams here for this fight. And I don't think anything can actually hit us on Giovanni's entire team. So uh, let's just uh, badge boost up so that we do more damage with our hits. And uh, Nidorino, legend, just sitting here trying to trying to damage us with uh, some incredibly weak moves. And, uh, you know, the Nidos, they're just like, yeah, double kick. Double kick is perfect against Ghost Lax. <laughs> Four hit KO with body slam. So we get through that whole fight with the body slam spam. No problem. No problem whatsoever. So we're just going to go up to the 10th floor. We're going to get the rare candy and the earthquake TM. So outside of a little bit of bad luck on the rival five fight on the first attempt, that was an absolute cakewalk section of the game for Ghost Lax. In fact, we found that on Giovanni, his smart AI causes him to just use double kick against Ghost Lax over and over again, even though it can have no effect whatsoever. But now the question is, how different is it with Normlax? Well, let's get into it, starting with the Erica fight. And then hopefully just rest up and then beat the rest of the team. She misses a bind, nice. So here we've gotten it so that she's doing very little damage overall. Bind is kind of bad, but okay, we get through. Stun Spore missed, Sleep Powder hits. She misses Razor Leaf, she hits Acid. Now Razor Leaf is the much bigger issue, right? So she knocks us out because we were asleep for so many turns and she hit the Razor Leaf with a crit. Okay. So here, she can get non-crit Razor Leafs, which is kind of hilarious. So here, I do think we want to heal up before we go to that Weeping Bell if we can. Here, let's just get one hit right there. Now let's rest so that we are on higher health, ideally. She misses Bind. There we go. So now we're through to here. Nice. We easily knock that one out. Pedal Dance doesn't do that much, and we easily win. So there we go. Yeah, Erica just took a couple attempts. Not really too bad. Really not bad at all. Just get right here, save the game, yet again. Here we go. So here, I think we have to go Amnesia here, but like, oh, Sand Attack, it's the worst. Slash also kind of sucks. He doesn't have to use it, though. We get Swift. Oh, we're getting wrecked there. So I don't know. We might be in a situation where we really just have to get through Sand Slash ASAP. Okay. And then we're like hoping for withdraw from Cloister. Oh man. Here, we're going some amnesias here. Here we can sleep this off. We, we kind of want Poison Sting from Sand Slash. Here, we're going to rest against Cloyster. Very nice. Here, we can Rock Slide. Rock Slide. Rock Slide. There we go. So we do get through there. Now we can Headbutt here on the Magneton. It's not going to do that much to us. Now, Kadabra. Oh, Critical hits me. Are you kidding me? We don't get the crit, we get through Kadabra very easily there. 
Okay. Like, so while that critical hit ended our best attempt at Rival 5 with Normlax, we're starting to see a little bit of a theme here. In Gen 1, critical hits ignore all of your setup moves, so whether we're using Amnesia or maybe in, later in the run we might be using Harden, if we get hit by critical hit moves, it won't matter. They'll just ignore those setups and get a lot of damage. And when you're running on zero DVs runs, you typically don't have enough levels or enough HP in order to survive multiple critical hits. And this rival's team is basically made to be a critical hit machine. I ended up going down to Cinnabar Island to get access to the Blizzard TM. Let's see if that makes any difference. Like, if we can just get through Sand Slash without a Sand Attack, I think we have a shot here. I think. So here I'm just going to two-shot it there. And now let's try to set up Amnesia on Cloister. So we have no accuracy drops is the key point. Yes, headbutt's kind of tedious here, but I don't know. At this point, Blizzard might just do more damage because it has so many defense buffs. Here, I'm just going to rest to get rid of damage here on the Magneton. Magneton's kind of safe, honestly. Okay, headbutt's doing decent damage. Kadabra critical hits but we get a critical hit nice we get sand attacked here but then we win okay he he bit but we survived with seven hp so is that a good fight no but it is a possible fight so here i'm just so fortunately with the help of blizzard the giovanni fight is actually a complete joke for normlax but we are seeing that this Pokemon is falling further and further behind. Between all the extra resets and the fact that we had to go down to Cinnabar Island, it's already about an hour and 11 minutes on Normlax, when at the same time, our Ghostlax beat this entire section in about 46 minutes of real time. And for the record, I did this Normlax run after I had already completed two Ghostlax runs, so I already knew what kind of routing I wanted to use and what kinds of situations might be difficult as I went through. Even with all those advantages, Ghostlax is clearly superior, but now it's time to take on Sabrina. Now the Sabrina fight isn't really too different between these two Pokemon because she just uses random moves, so let's just check out how Ghostlax did there. So here against Sabrina, I'm just trying to body slam her to death. Oh, and I didn't recover all the body slams. No, that's terrible. We are out of PP. That, that's just purely me being bad, guys. I'm sorry. Um, we have an elixir. Save the game. Let's try this again. So here we're just really going to spam A on Body Slam. We got the Flash Miss even. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Psychic. Oh, critical hit. Are you kidding me? We get all the way to the Alakazam with no accuracy drops and it just destroys me with a single Psychic. And the critical hit Psychic does not care about Amnesia. There would be no way for us to avoid that. So here she goes Recover instead and we Body Slam her to death. So it's really just a matter of, you know, if you want to want to body slam Sabrina, you just have to stop her from uh, flashing you. And uh, if she never flashes you, then you don't feel too bad about a body slam. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's stupid. Come on. Come on. I'm a child. My sense of humor is just just ridiculous. Nobody, nobody should ever listen to anything I say. <laughs> oh, man. But with Sabrina going down, it's now time to check out the Blaine fight, and this one could be a challenge. Here we are, Blaine. Let's just see how he actually goes. 
so here I do think we set up Amnesia to reduce damage from Flamethrower. Now we Rock Slide. It does over half. Nice. We don't care about Tail Whip because uh, we're, we're immune to all of their physical moves. Okay, we're getting Fire Spun there, but... Okay, he goes Reflect. We kind of need a crit here. Here, we're going to rest because we got burned. Here, I'm going to body slam to try to paralyze this one. We do get the paralysis. And rock slide? Yes, there we go. There we go. We have destroyed Blaine on the first attempt. Joke jump so as ghost lex moves on to the final gym just over 52 minutes let's check in how normlax does on this fight so here first things first i'm gonna body slam him once okay we get the paralysis um i'm gonna set amnesia once he tail whips amnesia again he confuse rays and we knock ourselves out that's too bad now, unlike Ghost Lax, who got through Blaine on the very first attempt, our Normlax spent about five minutes of real time resetting on this battle. Now, there are some things that you might mention, like, well, you could just learn Surf, or you could just learn Earthquake here, and that would make this fight a lot easier. The reason I'm not using those right now is because of the in-game strategy that I ended up with when I did all of my previous runs. The downside of that though is that we have to get through this fight with the moves that we currently have because all of the attacking moves that we know right now will actually be forgotten as we move through this run. But really the reason why we're having so much trouble here is because of the fact that we can be hit by normal type moves and Blaine's team gets a lot of critical hits. These are really fast Pokemon and since Gen 1 bases all critical hit rates on speed, it's Pretty common to struggle here with a lot of Pokemon. So getting through this fight is going to rely on not getting critical hits at inopportune times and hopefully doing enough damage with our Blizzard and Body Slam after we boost up. Yeah, not not being immune to normal kind of sucks here compared to Ghost Lax. Okay, there he's finally paralyzed. Here, let's just heal up. We get confused. But we knock that one out, cool. Fire spins, not really that big of a deal because it doesn't do much. Okay, we get the paralysis there. Now we do get a rest. Okay, takedown did a lot of damage. So we kind of want something like this, the fire spin. And now we can move first. Cool. And he take down. Okay, Blizzard. Oh, he's on a sliver. He goes reflect. There we go. There we go. Come on, Blaine. Now we're in 19 minutes. So we're definitely slower than Ghost Lax at this point. So the gap between these two Pokemon just seems to be widening and widening, and I wouldn't blame you if you thought that this was the time to click off this video because clearly the Ghost Lax is just head and shoulders better than a normal Snorlax. But Blaine is the last of the gym leaders that doesn't have smart AI. And while yes, Bruno and Agatha are just going to be random, we have the toughest trainers in the game upcoming. And there are a lot of spots in Pokemon Yellow where their teams are so much improved compared to Pokemon Red and Blue that I think this might be closer than you think. The key is going to come down to status and critical hits. And this next fight against Giovanni is a critical hit fest. Let's see if we can get through on the first attempt. So here we're going to body slam and body slam there. Okay. Here I'm going amnesia the whole way. 
here. I'm going to rest off the damage. Yes, it's using double team. That sucks, but... Here, we just need to land one more hit. We got it. Here, body slam. Let's just see how much bubble beam does there. Oh, bubble beam is stronger, yeah. Here, bubble beam, bubble beam, nice. And against the ride on, we get one shot. <laughs> oh god. Oh, it's because of the screech. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try again. So here, we want a body slam here. We missed the body slam. We got a gen one miss. That was stupid. Okay, here, let's just destroy this one as quickly as possible. Oh, we're getting screeched anyway. So here, let's rest to recover HP since these ones are just going to double kick against us over and over again. So here, Bubble Beam is the play, I think. Yeah, it's, it's like a two-hitter there. I think a non-crit here is also a two-hitter. And yeah, it's because of the screeches that we were too weak to survive there, I think. Let's just see. Harden's at level 41 in two levels. But I'm just not sure I want to I wanna do that strat just yet. Okay, so here, body slam, he's paralyzed, body slam, nice. Double team, but we're body slamming. Okay, and we hit all of them. So this time we have no defense drops. And now we even get a badge boost up our defense. So now we can do that and that, cool. We're going to rest here on this Nido King. Let's just body slam him down, I guess. Ooh, not enough. Three body slams. So now right on hits me, but I survive and I one shot it. So yeah, we just needed to avoid Screech. Once we get through with no Screech, easy win. And given that Persian's only one in four to use Screech, um, yeah, I think that's that's not really that bad. Okay, so here now. I think it's time to go ahead and learn Thunderbolt. We're going to want it for Lorelei anyway, over Bubble Beam. So we've got the Thunderbolt there. And now we can save the game and let's fight rival number six. So here, we are going to uh, lead off with Amnesia here, because this one doesn't even know uh, any moves that are scary anymore. So we can just destroy it. Now we level up right here. We get to learn Harden. Ooh, wait just a second. Here, let's replace Body Slam. I know it seems crazy, but... Here, Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt there. Thunderbolt there. And now we're going to use Harden repeatedly for Badge Boost Glitch. Here, now we're going to rest to recover HP. Okay. And now we're going to rest again here. So we've set up the double badge boost glitch here, which means our special stat is absolutely massive now but we still do want to get through with decent health to the next two Pokemon. And this Magneton keeps critting, which is why we keep having to rest. Okay, so Magneton is now a two-hitter there. Kadabra goes Reflect, which is fine. We one-shot. Now we've leveled up, though. But at least we have... Oh, come on. We just need not to get Fire Spin... We just need Fire Spin to miss, and it won't miss. Okay. Let's just see here. Because I already learned Thunderbolts. Rip.
Um, yeah, I mean, I've already learned Thunderbolt, so I can't really do anything here. So, I mean, the other possibility is to start rare candying right here. Learn Harden over Thunderbolts. Let's try this strat here for a minute. Because if we go pretty hard on these, let's see, we'll, we get one more in the, yeah, we just need four remaining. So that's fine. Let's save the game right here. We're trying not to level up in the middle of this fight. Okay. So here, now what we do is we start with Amnesia. And we're trying to make it so that we'll outspeed everything, ideally. Okay, so we get tons of badge boosts there. Now body slam and body slam. We got poisoned, but that's probably okay. Cloister, body slam. It withdraws, but that's perfectly fine. Magneton's a one-hitter. That's a one-hitter. That's a one-hitter. So... We will not learn Double Edge, no. And we will abandon it, yes. So that fight goes to show why I couldn't learn extra TMs earlier in the game. My final strategy in this one is to actually use Harden and Amnesia for badge boosts, rest so that I can heal up while using the badge boosts, and only one attacking move on every battle from here on out. You see, in my earlier test run of Ghost Slax, I actually made it to the champion on pace for an S tier finish, only to find out that because the Sand Slash on his team will only hit Ghost Slax with Earthquake over and over and over again, the fact that I didn't have Harden made this borderline impossible. In fact, I ended up resetting for 30 minutes of real time, and I play at four times speed just to win this fight with a strategy that just involved Amnesia, Rest, Body Slam, and Blizzard. Now, because Earthquake is the only move that can hit our Ghost Lax, maybe by having Harden at the end and using the double badge boost glitch, we can get in good enough range to get through this fight faster. We'll just have to see how it goes. So while we make our way to the league, let's check back in on Norm Lax. How does that Giovanni fight and Rival 6 fight go? And then we'll check each of our challengers as they go through the Elite Four and then try to set up. Like, we're not gonna get one shot here, fortunately. Oh, he sand attacks me, you jerk. And he sand attacks again, double jerk. Plus we got the double teams coming in. Here, I'm gonna rest to get health back. Oh, the slash, terrible. And the screech probably meant we were already dead because the double kicks are coming in after that. But I mean, at this point, if we're using this many rare candies... Oh, we didn't have the harden. What am I doing? Here, let's try with the body slam. So here, I'm going to go pretty hard on rare candies here, though. And this is kind of all or nothing at this point. Because last time we did the rare candies on uh, Rival 6. Let's just see. Okay, so I think we just need better ranges. Like not getting the paralysis here. Or sorry, not getting the accuracy drops here. At least not as many. So we one shot there. We got one accuracy drop this time. Critical hit from Persian, but we do knock it out. Here we're going to rest first against Needle Queen. It does get a crit there. Okay, so let's rest up again since it crit. Oh, another crit. Come on. She's just critting like crazy. She's got a what, about a 1 in 6, 1 in 7 crit chance? Let's 
So here we will finish our setup here. Okay, so now body slam, come on. Has to hit. There we go. Body slam, one shot's there. Let's see how much the range is. Looks like a three hit KO here on the final ride on. There we go. So we do get through. We can learn double edge, but we're not going to kind of stick with body slam here. Cool. Okay, so we can get through that fight. And now it's on to rival number six, where we're hoping to basically do all our setup on the first Pokemon if we can. Really, I don't know. I guess probably the executes better to set up on because it's doesn't really have anything good against us. A lot of status moves that we can just heal off. So here I think we body slam here first. Body slam, body slam. Okay, and now I think we start using Amnesia since it will solar beam on us. It's fine. Here we'll just heal up. Obviously, everything other than Leech Seed can't really do much to us while we're asleep. Here we'll just uh, harden. Five and six. Here we're just going for rest so that we get rid of paralysis. And you know, I mean, we set up so many turns there that. Here, body slam. Body slam. We're confused, but. I mean, if we can manage to land a hit, I think we just one shot everything. From here and we get the critical hit from Kadabra of course right on cue critical hit from Kadabra it's like a hallmark of these battles so here here let's just set up I don't know maybe sand slash isn't really that bad to set up on since I mean like yes slash does decent damage but nothing else is really that strong And here, if we can avoid crits, we're really in good shape, I think. Here, we can just rest off. Like, Slash doesn't do that much, and we're out speeding now. So here, let's just finish our setup here. And Body Slam should one-shot. Body Slam, one-shot. Body Slam, one-shot. Body Slam, one-shot. Body Slam one shot. We've made it to the Flareon. Body Slam is going to be a two hit KO, but he gets paralyzed. So yeah, that's the strat. Just set up on the first Sand Slash. So this is kind of becoming a theme where we can see that Normlax is struggling a lot more than Ghostlax. And it makes perfect sense up to this point. We've taken an hour and a half to get through the Rival 6 fight. And if you were paying attention on that clip I showed from my first attempt with Ghostlax, we were at the champion at about an hour and 30 minutes in that one. But this Normlax could technically beat my first attempt with Ghostlax if it just doesn't hit any major walls from here on out, because that first attempt took almost two hours to finally get through at the end. So now it's time to find out if the adjustment that I've made with the double badge boost glitch strategy is enough to improve the time on our ghost lacks such that it actually manages to win this one. Because if we don't have any improvement, it might still fail. So let's start by seeing both of these Pokemon go through Lance and then see how they finally end up when they beat the champion. How much time does it actually take? All right, so here we go against Prima. We are going to lead off with the Amnesia spam. And now the Harden spam. Here, we're gonna rest off damage here. She gets a lot of crits too. Here, let's just see. Plus five, plus six. Now, once again, let's rest so that we ideally can survive here. 
And now Thunder should be a one-hitter. Thunder here should be a one-hitter. Thunder here should be a one-hitter. Here we just are hoping, yes, it's a one-hit KO there. Lapras only uses Confuse Ray, so as long as we can hit Thunder, we win. So here, what we're going to do, we're going to lead off with the Amnesia. We don't really care about the speed drop too much. Um, and now we are setting up Harden on top of Amnesia intentionally. This order is actually important because Amnesia first will raise our special stat. And then when we add the Hardens on top of Amnesia, we get badge boosts on top of our already boosted um, special stat. So we're boosting our special even higher. And don't get me wrong, if we ever, you know, level up in the middle of the fight, we'll simply, you know, get the... We'll, we'll just keep the same uh, special. And we don't mind the attack drops here because we're going to be purely a special attacker anyway. So here, that's a one-hitter. Cloister's Ice Beam, but we one-shot. Slowbro surfs, but we one shot. Jinx thrash, one shot. And now Lapras, we leveled up on Lapras, but fortunately it's using Hydro Pump, but we got all the special boosts from Amnesia, so it doesn't matter. Because uh, Bruno, he's a cakewalk. It's sleepy time, guys. So here we're going to go Harden since everything hits with physical moves here first. And this is just about badge boosts. Oh, and look at all the badge boosts that he's giving me by using Screech. Okay, and now Amnesia on top just to get even more. And here Earthquake should just be pretty much sweeping at this point. Okay, we're out speeding everything and we're just one-shotting the whole team. Oh yeah, look at that. Easy win. We're up to level 50 now. I went Earthquake here with the Ghost Lax, but yeah. So here we're going to lead off with the Amnesias. And uh, now we can just start hardening. You know, he's ex-defending. But now we're going to get all the speed boosts here too. And be very survivable. So here we can just Psychic, 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 Psychic. And we're to the Machamp. We leveled up right here. Submission did decent damage, but it's a one shot because of all the Amnesias. So easy win. Now Psychic can, of course, just destroy this next fight too. I was wrong. So what can we do instead? Well, we can go Psychic here. There we go. That's the play, Psychic. Rip. So we forget Earthquake to learn Psychic. That was actually the correct play. So here, Amnesia, Amnesia, Amnesia. Here, we'll go Harden here. Okay, we've got Toxic on, so we're gonna try to heal up here now. Okay, so there we go, we rest. So no more Toxic to worry about. We're just trying to finish our hardened setup here. Okay, now Psychic. We should be outspeeding things too, unless we level up. So, yeah, Psychic's doing decent damage here. There we go. Another one hitter there. We leveled up right here, but we knock out to the final Gengar with one hit from Psychic. So that was an easy game. Easy, easy, easy game. Amnesia first. We get confused. 
but we're going amnesia the whole way here. She's trying to set up substitutes when she has a substitute. Good job. Um, we're still confused. Now we're no longer confused. You know, so the good thing about Agatha is this... We're, we're really allowed to set up on the first Gengar. And if she swaps to Golbat, it's not that big of a deal in this version. So now Psychic... We are faster, so Psychic one-shots there once we actually hit. Psychic's going to one-shot there. Psychic is going to one-shot there. Psychic one-shots there. We level up right before the last Gengar puts us to sleep. Rip. Fortunately, I mean, Psychic shouldn't do that much, because same for Dream Eater, because we've got all the boosts. But if she crits <laughs> right on cue... We, we get wrecked. You know. Just saying. So here, let's try this again. Come on. We have to actually be able to use the amnesia here. Here, we're going to set up all the hardens. Here we're gonna rest. So here's Psychic. Mega Drain doesn't matter, so Psychic. Now we're just going auto way the rest of the way. Hoping not to get put to sleep this time. If we don't get put to sleep, I think we basically win. Um, yeah, Dream Eater while we're awake. She goes Psychic. We get an easy win. So yeah, we just need to not be put to sleep there. We're fine. Okay, so now we learned last time. So first things first, I'm going to set up Amnesia defensively. As we can see that that did a lot of damage. Okay, so we're going to rest up damage here. We really don't want a critical hit Hydro Pump. Like, that's the scariest move for us. Okay. Okay, Dragon Rage. So we get a heal up there. Now we're setting up Harden, trying to get faster. Okay. Now Ice Beam. It's not a one-hitter, but... Nice. Oh, wait. Sorry, I didn't mean to use the Amnesia. I meant to use Rest. He's frozen, so he can't actually damage us. So now, Ice Beam. One shot's there. Ice Beam, one shot's there. Ice Beam there. We're going to Ice Beam against Aerodactyl. And finally, we're up against Dragonite goes blizzard but ice beam destroys it and we win there we go all right so here i'm hoping he might use hyper beam i'm actually intentionally setting up harden here first I'm gonna amnesia to okay we survive we get a setup more here i'm gonna rest i'm now faster than the gyarados okay he leers, but see, there's the last of my amnesias. And now I can just kind of harden up here. I'm gonna rest right now. I'm plus six in both special and in defense. I get even another badge boost there. Now I can ice beam and one shot. Ice beam, one shot. Ice Beam, one shot. Ice Beam, we outspeed Aerodactyl in one shot. We level up right here, but Ice Beam one shots Dragonite. So there we go. We've made it here an hour 43 minutes. So Ghost Lax reaches the champion at about an hour and 16 minutes of real time, while Normlax, even with the frozen Brock fight, is here at an hour and 40 minutes. 
But if Ghostlax can't improve on that 30 minute champion split from the last attempt, this could be more competitive than we think. So let's check out the Ghostlax attempt first. This is the game plan, Harden. Here, we're going for all the Hardens that we can. Oh, he gets a critical hit, come on. Okay. Yeah, he gets the crit. Sand Slash doesn't crit that much, but it does crit reasonably. You know, it's like a one in eight, I believe. Yeah, about one in eights to crit. Okay, we're gonna rest again here. Just trying to stay out of the range where he could one-shot us with a crit harden. Okay, we're gonna rest again here. He crit and hit us twice, and we were barely alive still. Okay, last amnesia there, and the critical hit knocks us out. Come on, we were so close. If we just get all the setup here, we will win this fight, I'm sure of it. But in spite of my optimism, this strategy just doesn't really work. And the whole issue is that in Generation 1 of Pokemon, stat boosts are not taken into consideration when your opponent critical hits you. And Sandslash isn't exactly a critical hit machine here, it's only going to critical hit you maybe 1 in 8 times on average, but that's enough. And it always seems to me when I get to the champion, maybe it's just my ROMs, but I get critical hit a lot here by this Pokemon. And we're not talking about the slash that's basically a guaranteed critical hit, I'm saying moves like Earthquake, critical hitting far more often than they seem like they should. Which means we basically never got through even the Alakazam in all these attempts. Sometimes I was trying to knock out the Sand Slash first, just to see if maybe I could get to the Alakazam and set up easier there. Could I knock both of the first two Pokemon out and then set up on the Exeggutor, who's far easier since it doesn't use any direct damaging moves that could actually hit a ghost Pokemon. I finally arrived at the solution that the best strategy would be to simply use Ice Beam to try to get a freeze. Because if I freeze my opponent, then I'm guaranteed to be able to do all the setup. And once I get all the setup off, this should be a guaranteed win. So I was sitting here using Ice Beam over and over again, well over a hundred times in total, trying to get a freeze on either the first Sand Slash or on the Alakazam, running around like crazy just in case I had accidentally done some sort of RNG manipulation, even ran back to Agatha's room just to see if that would help. It did not seem to help. So we ended up grinding here for quite a while, trying to get the freeze and when I finally got it, let's see how the fight actually went. Until way down the line, so... We're just gonna sit here for a minute. Okay. There we finally get the freeze. Look at that. Look at that nonsense. So here we can now set up all the amnesias. We legit got the freeze this time. Now we can rest to get all our health back just because we won't outspeed against the final Flareon. We can knock that one out. That one, one hit KO. That one, one hit KO. That one, one hit KO. Cloyster is the one that takes like a couple hits to get through. We get hit by a crit there. We level up, flamethrower, ice beam, flamethrower, ice beam, ice beam. We finally win. So that took an hour 41.25 in order to beat the game on this setting with this Snorlax. But we were there basically on the champion for like the better part of 15 minutes. We probably hit him with like a hundred ice beams. We got one Gen 1 miss. 
and we got exactly one freeze. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? That is stupid. But uh, it does work. So it is technically better with the Ghost Lax to do the whole run with Amnesia and Harden and Rest and just have one more move left over when you get to the late game. The reason, double badge boost glitch. The double badge boost glitch is so incredibly powerful that you can basically take advantage of that factor when you're coming in here and, and wrecking opponents. And really the whole weakness of this set is enemies getting critical hits. So just a quick correction, in the live commentary, I said it was 15 minutes of real time. It was actually 25 minutes of real time spent on the champion. And that was all just due to repeatedly getting critical hit by one of the first two Pokemon or not being able to get the freeze. So this is just bad luck, guys. This is just bad RNG. It's always going to be a factor in the game. But we can say at the end that once we did get the freeze on the first Pokemon, the strategy worked perfectly. It was a clean sweep from there. Contrast that with my first run where I was always getting walled on either the Magneton or the Cloyster, I'd say it was an improvement. But now what we need to find out is how does Normlax do? Because if Normlax wins this fight fairly easily, we may have just found the spot where the ghost typing just really is more of a hindrance than an advantage in Gen 1. Okay, so here we go. Let's start off with the Hardens here. He does go Earthquake a couple times there. I'm gonna rest off the damage here. Fury Swipes, not nearly as scary. Slash, also not actually that bad. Earthquake does destroy us there though, okay. So we need better luck there than that. Nah. Got just a couple minutes. Okay, so there, Harden, Harden, Harden. We don't really mind that he's poisoned me because we just want to reach the point where we outspeed quickly. Here we will rest off since he could get a range to knock us out on the next turn. Okay, let's finish the amnesias here. Here, rest it off. Okay. Oops, didn't mean to use rest again. Rip, we're losing time. Okay, last harden here. Now we ice beam. We're gonna ice beam, not get the one hitter there. The reason we didn't get the one hitter there is because we set up the hardens after the amnesia, or before the amnesia rather. So we gotta be careful about that, okay try this again because here the other possibility of course is to go for the freeze which we do not get there here we'll amnesia we go slash rip okay let's try again we're this is just so stupidly close lance we don't need to hear from you okay come on because if we can just get the weaker moves first then in theory, okay, he misses Fury Swipes, it's fine. Oh, and he crits again. Are you kidding me? This guy, his crit rate. <sighs> okay, Fury Swipes first is actually much better. Slash isn't the end of the world. Fury Swipes will rest up. Okay. Okay, he poisons me, but that's actually kind of fine because now I get a rest. He poisons me again after two slashes, but I get a rest. Okay, now we get a harden. Okay, Slash is basically always a grit, so that's fine. Okay. 
Okay, so now our setup is complete, I think. Yes, so Ice Beam. We outspeed. Ice Beam, one shot. Yes, Ice Beam, one shot. Ice Beam here is a one shot. Your Ice Beam. We've once again got him in basically a two hit range. We didn't get the range there that time. We level up. Flareon goes, fire spin. Come on. Okay, he misses fire spin, flamethrower, and there we win. So it took an hour 49, 32 in this one. So we just barely lose to Ghost Lax. So, yeah. In the end, it looks like, sorry, I misremembered. So Ghost Lax was at an hour 41. And like I said, we probably lost a good at least 15 minutes just resetting to try to get the freeze there. So the Ghost Lax is definitely faster than Norm Lax. Like with me playing like I play, just my standard play style. But what we can also say is that really Norm Lax was a little bit better in terms of resets, especially at the end. At the end, it was much better. This number could have been much lower for Ghost Lax here, assuming that we just hadn't gotten such bad luck at the end. And here, when we look at the number of TMs, one thing that's pretty clear, sorry, I realized I'm not screen sharing, rip. <laughs> so here, they're the same level. Normlax is slower. They have the same experience at the end of the game. The big difference here is Normlax had 10 fewer resets and four fewer TMs. Now the TM strategy of Normlax could have worked for Ghostlax. So we could almost immediately say that Ghostlax could have been improved up towards where Normlax is, definitely. Um, I think that's actually, honestly, a huge factor here. Like this could have been much closer score-wise if this was just improved. And like I said, the resets at the end of the game accounted for a ton of these resets for Ghost Lax. In fact, if I look at that run, let's just see. And after checking back the tape, it turns out that Ghost Lax went into the champion with only 21 resets and then reset 67 times to beat the champion on minimum battles. Now, we could discuss different ideas for different strategies to optimize this one more, but the fact remains that the issue ultimately with any sort of setup strategy is when opponents can get critical hits. And this is exacerbated by the fact that we're on minimum battles and we're playing on zero DVs. In fact, I think we would perform way better if we had better stats just by upping the DVs on this Pokemon. This would probably be a situation where we would completely crush the game with both of these Snorlaxes without much difficulty because it's the extra stats that matter and the real problem for both of these Pokemon is just that they don't get those extra stat points, which at around level 50 is an extra 15 points in every single stat. But with that being done, I'm going to throw up the thank yous to the channel members, and we have one last question to answer. How does Ghost Lax do against Mewtwo? So anyway, that does it for this one. We have beaten the game. Happy Halloween, guys. That was a scary bad final battle, but uh, we do finally get it. So nice. <laughs> nice. Um, We'll take that hour 41 25 i'm gonna edit this one up get it up on the channel so with that being done i mean this is an 81.4 this is a low a tier pokemon and it's something that we've probably noticed a lot in my tier listing system like this is snorlax with the benefit of also having ghost type so it can't even be hit by normal type moves but Really, whenever we look at competitive Pokemon, especially the top tier compet or like, you know, top tier Smogan Pokemon, the vast majority of them are not that good at solo runs. 
when you compare them to Pokemon like Hypno, compare them to Pokemon like Weepin' Bell, compare them to, you know, Gengar can get up there in the top tiers of Gen 1 OU, but, you know, compare them to Pokemon like, you know, Poliwhirl. Those are the Pokemon that are actually good at solo runs. The ones that get access to the badge boost glitch, get access to sleep, get access to double badge boost, so like a Slowbro, absolutely crush solo runs. The Pokemon that suck at solo runs are the ones that just have really good stats, but they don't level up fast, right? Anything in the slow level up group, except for Mewtwo, basically gets wrecked. And anything that, you know, has top tier stats, you would think, but just doesn't get a move pool, something like Alakazam gets wrecked in solo runs. So, you know, in Pokemon Yellow, in Pokemon Red and Blue, Alakazam's top tier, absolutely. But in Pokemon Yellow, it gets absolutely wrecked because it doesn't even start the game with confusion and it doesn't have coverage moves. So when you look at it that way, like, I, I always find it really funny that a lot of the Pokemon that you would expect to be top tier, if you're not grinding levels, if you're not just, you know, using every single TM, even when you're using every single TM, sometimes they just turn out to be really, really bad, relatively speaking. You know, I mean, it's our Mewtwo time. Let's see how he goes. First things first, I'm going to Amnesia like crazy here. And we get a critical hit Psychic that just one-shots us. But I'll take that from a Mewtwo. Mewtwo's got like a 25% crit rate. So here we gotta go for the Amnesia. 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 We can't be affected by Swift. There's Psychic, but if it's not a crit, we're basically fine. So we're just doing all the setup here. Okay, now... Ice Beam is a two-hit KO. And we take down the Mewtwo. So there we go. Ghost Lax ends the game. Level 57. I believe it's about the same level as my last run. But, you know, the Ice Beam Amnesia rest harden at the end. Even for Cloyster. Cloyster was a two-hit KO with this setup. So, uh, yeah, Badge Boost Glitch is kind of OP. Don't get me wrong. But it's, it's not as OP as I think people think. Just because crits exist in the game. So, Editor Teo here, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's taken a long time to get out. Apologies for the delay. October was kind of a crazy month for me. Started the month recovering from a surgery, then learned midway through the month that I'm going to be a daddy. That's right. Daddy RBY is going to be an actual thing. <laughs> I don't know too much details at this point, but I do know that when the baby's born, it's going to be running on zero DVs. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it going in November. Tons of awesome videos are about to come out, so I just appreciate your patience and thank you so much for supporting me. Anyway, thank you so much for watching once again. See you in the next one. Later.